On the 5th of January 2021, 22-years-old Lawrence Simon Warunge would pick up a knife from school and travel home just to kill his entire family. This would come after he had watched an entire season of popular American television show Killing Eve. This was a crime so gruesome and heartless that you can't help but wonder how did an American television series make this young man pick up a knife, travel all the way from Tika to Nairobi just to slaughter every member of his family like a goat? Was there an ulterior motive? And did he commit this atrocity all by himself? Earlier that day on the 5th, Lawrence was said to be in school. He picked up a knife, picked up his money, and then traveled all the way back to Nairobi, heading for his family house. Now, while he was outside, he surveyed the neighborhood. He did not want his tracks to be traced. So he had practically trained himself for this attack he was about to carry out. So instead of going through the main gate, he went through the adjacent compound, very close to theirs. It was in this compound that Lawrence would kill his very first victim. A man by the name of James Kenyan Jui was said to be walking in the building at the time Lawrence showed up. He was the only one in the compound when Lawrence came. He had other co-workers but they had all gone out to have drinks. So when Lawrence came around, James did not think too much of it. Apparently, James knew Lawrence to be the ogre's son, the man who owns the properties. James knew him to be the son of the man who owns the properties. So when he saw uh, Lawrence, he really didn't think too much of it because it's not unusual for the son of the owner of the property to come around the property. So while he was there, he and Lawrence they spoke briefly, just greetings, and then Lawrence requested a, a metal bar from him. And um, again, James did not think too much of it. And of course, James wouldn't ask him what he wanted to do with it. This is his father's property. So James found a metal bar and gave it to Lawrence. And then James continued what he was doing. Lawrence was nervous. I mean, this was going to be his first victim. So his hands was shaking. James saw it. And James asked him if he was all right. At this time, he was already with the metal bar. Probably James wasn't connecting the dots or James would never have imagined that what was about to happen would happen so when james asked him if he was all right lawrence replied that he was fine and that he was just tired and james was like all right just go and see how you can rest james continued what he was doing turned his back to uh lawrence and before he knew it lawrence had struck him heavily on his head with the metal bar that he had given him instantly james fell to the ground that was when lawrence was said to have pounced on him with the knife and slit his throat lawrence killed james and after he finished killing james he just waited in that compound until he heard his father drive in to their own compound in the other side of the fence by uh, 8 a.m as it was said when it was 8 a.m it was pretty much dark a little that was when lawrence scaled the fence it was a barbed wire fence and when he tried to jump over the fence he was injured, but that did not even stop him. Okay, now it's important to know that James wasn't in the original plan for Lawrence to kill. It was just unfortunate that he was in his way and he knew if he goes to kill his family, James being in that adjacent compound would, would hear the screams and, uh, and would most likely know what was happening and would most likely ruin his uh, plans to end his family. That was why Lawrence had to get rid of James. So when Lawrence heard his father, Mr. Nicholas Warunge, drive into the compound, he scaled the fence, he jumped over the fence through the barbed wire, even though he got injured, that did not stop him. And so when he got into the compound, he went straight to the backyard, where from a distance he saw his mother, Miss Anne Warunge, through the kitchen window, making dinner for her husband who had just returned. Lawrence, spotting the mother, knew that the mother was definitely going to be the next victim. So as Anwarunge was making dinner, Lawrence went to the power circuit outside and disconnected it, causing blackout in the entire house. The people inside did not exactly see that uh, the power supply had been cut from within them. They thought it was a general power supply outage that would most likely return after a few moments. Little did they know that the worst was about to happen. So after Lawrence cut out the power supply, he lit paraffin on a 
plastic bag and dropped it near the kitchen door from the backyard and then he waited at the corner and Warunge seeing fire through the window was curious to know what that was as anyone would she opened the backyard door to see the plastic bag burning and she was surprised as to who did this and how it got there but before she could even think she got struck with a metal bar to her head and when she turned around wailing in pain she saw her son Lawrence holding a knife about to stab her it was said she struggled and tried to fight back but unfortunately Lawrence overpowered her eventually stabbing her multiple times and slitting her throat now while Lawrence and Anne were going at it it was said that somebody came to the kitchen because the person had heard a commotion and that person was Lawrence's little cousin by the name of Christian now Christian was in the house he had come for the holidays and so he was just staying over because his school had not resumed so when Christian heard the commotion in the kitchen it was said he ran to the kitchen to see what was happening only to see Lawrence on top of Anne stabbing her and killing her now some sources claim that uh, immediately Lawrence finished killing Anne he went to Kristen and killed him in the hallway but some other sources claim that when Kristen saw Lawrence killing Anne he ran back upstairs to hide under the bed in his room so eventually and while he was running he also raised the alarm at this time Nicholas Warunge was in his bedroom getting ready to have his dinner so when Nicholas heard the commotion coming from downstairs he opened his room to see what all that was about I mean at this time he did not know his wife had been killed in the kitchen and he did not even know that uh Kristen had seen something horrible so when he opened this door he saw his son Lawrence standing by the end of the hallway with a knife and blood all over his body Lawrence seeing him from the distance knew that he was going to be his next victim and so the chase began Mr Nicholas was said to have run back into his room but in an attempt to lock the door Lawrence pushed back causing him to fall over but then he got up on his feet and tried to make it to his balcony to jump down and hopefully run to the gates to get help but when Nicholas jumped down from the balcony of his room he dislocated his ankles and because of that he was unable to stand properly giving Lawrence all the time in the world to get to him and that was when Lawrence was said to have pounced on him and stabbed him multiple times when Lawrence was satisfied with killing his father he went back into the building went to his younger brother's room Maxwell and it was not clear if Maxwell knew what was happening but Maxwell was said to have been in the room while all this was going on when Lawrence saw Maxwell he did the same thing that he had been doing to every other person since he came to the house he stabbed him to death and that was when Lawrence decided that okay there's one more person to kill and he went for Christian who had first seen him killing Anne and he saw Christian under the bed. It was said that Christian begged him to spare his life, but Lawrence didn't listen and he slit Christian's throat too. Lawrence continued opening doors in the house because he wasn't done. He wasn't done killing every member of his family. There were two more people left. So after searching every part of the house, he realized that the two people left was not in the house and those were his two sisters. Luckily for them, they had gone to school earlier that day and the two girls were in the boarding school so they weren't expected to come home anytime soon so Lawrence realizing that his two sisters has escaped his wrath he decided to chill he took a break sat down to catch his breath when he heard a grunt one of his victims was grunting he picked up the knife again and was wondering who was still alive he was sure he had killed everyone but somebody was clearly still alive and the person was grunting heavily to the point that he was almost scared that that person was going to draw attention to the compound after listening closely he realized that the grunt was coming from outside where he had stabbed his father and peeping through the balcony he saw that his father was still alive and the man was crawling towards the gate he rushed back downstairs met his father at the gate and that was where he stabbed him some more this time slitting his throat to make sure that he was dead for sure and then he went back inside it was said that he took his bath changed his clothes went to the kitchen to you know eat the dinner that his mom was making for his dad he went to the sitting room turned the power back on but switched off the lights all over the compound and then watched some television 
I must confess, this might just be one of the most gruesome murder story I have ever covered in this channel so far. How do you kill your entire family and still have the mind to change your clothes, have your bath, eat food, sit down in the sitting room to watch television when there is four dead bodies scattered all around the house? Not a single fear, not a single remorse, not a single feeling. This boy was so stone-hearted that he was able to eat, sit in the sitting room, cross his leg to watch TV when four members of his family were bleeding in their death. However, while Lawrence was eating, something strange happened. He heard a knock at the gate. He quickly turned off the television, went by the window side to peep who was knocking at their compound gate. And when he looked through, it was the police. What happened next would seem so much like a scene from a movie. So what were the police doing at the Warungi's gate at that time of the night? Did somebody see something or did somebody call them? Well, it turned out that in the adjacent compound where Lawrence had killed his first victim, James, um, James' co-workers returned from the club or party they had gone to only to meet James' dead body. And it was them who called the police to come and see what they had seen. When the police came to see that someone had been killed in that compound, they evacuated James' body. So at the same time the police were dealing with James' situation, that was the same time Lawrence was killing his family still. Because this was within 8 p.m. to uh, 9 p.m. Because the police knocked at the gates by 9 p.m. So there's a very high possibility that when the police were in the adjacent compound evacuating James' body, Lawrence was busy killing his family so after they had evacuated james body the police were like wondering what could have happened to james that was when they came to the warungi's gates to knock according to the police they wanted to ask the family if they had seen something but when they kept knocking and they kept knocking and no one was replying they assumed that everyone was asleep and they told themselves that they were going to come back the next day in the morning hopefully then they will be awake Personally, I would think them seeing James being killed in the next compound, that should have been a red flag that something bigger must be going on. I personally don't understand why the police had to go back or why the police did not proceed into the compound. I mean, someone had just been killed in an adjacent compound. They had every right to know. It's not even about them asking the family if they saw anything. What if there was a killer at large? They did a call to the police that maybe whoever killed James would have skilled the fence to go and kill the family too. Or whoever killed James might still be somewhere out there looking for more people to kill. The fact that the police left is something that does not sit right with me. I have a personal issue with the fact that they left after knocking for a while. I mean, if nobody was replying you, shouldn't that be of concern to you? Especially after finding that someone had been murdered in the next compound. And it was 9 p.m. It's still quite early. It's not like it was 12 midnight. So 9 p.m. I don't think an entire family member would be sleeping all together by 9 p.m. Someone should have at least heard the knock at the gate. And I would like your thought on this part of the story. Do you think the police should have left? Or do you think they should have waited to have gotten a response before they left? Let me know your thoughts on this part. So basically after the police left, Lawrence took a deep breath. I mean that was close. He went on to finish his food and the TV and then it was said he slept on his parents bed till the next morning by 4 a.m very early in the morning when it was still dark he picked up the shoes he wore the previous day when he committed the murders they were all soaked in blood the clothes he also wore and um, the the murder weapons and he took his parents mobile phones and probably every other gadget in the house entered into a bus traveled a distance to burn and bury those evidence it was also said he probably threw some in a septic tank somewhere in a bush so yeah every single evidence that was going to lead to him he got rid of them so after he left later on when it was done the police came to the warungi's gate again hopefully this time to ask them if they saw what happened to james only for them to end up seeing more than they bargained for so that was how they discovered the gruesome scene and it was totally shocking to them so this pretty much sent panic to the entire neighborhood who was shocked that such a crime had been committed 
under their nose it was like a very big shock in the community it was a very big shock in the neighborhood that the warunge family had been brutally murdered in such gruesome manner neighbors were said to have gone to the compound and cried out after seeing what they saw it was just unbelievable and the police were like who could have done this now at the initial time it wasn't stated that they had a suspect however their suspicion began to grow when they decided to reach out to the surviving family members of the warungi to let them know what had happened and obviously they would call the first son first right and the first son that happened to be lawrence you know when they tried to call lawrence his phone line was switched off some sources claim they reached out to the school and the school told them that Lawrence wasn't in school. Um, other sources claimed that when the police were trying to reach out to Lawrence and his phone was switched off, they traced his phone line to you know know where his location is, uh, or to know if he's safe. Probably thinking he might have been kidnapped, or maybe the person who killed his family was also coming for him too. So those are the things that the police were worried about. Only for them to trace Lawrence's phone number and learn that he was most likely in the house the previous day when this family was believed to have been murdered and they were surprised that wait if we can trace lawrence's phone number to this house yesterday that means lawrence was here yesterday and if he was here yesterday and his body is not among the bodies discovered in the compound then what are the possibilities that this might be the killer that they were looking for so police kept trying lawrence's phone number but it wasn't going through they just had to wait and hope that maybe he will switch his phone back on and they will be able to trace it to his location because after many days of trying his number and it wasn't going through and he wasn't in his school and he had been traced to the house they just knew that he was the suspect lawrence after burying all the evidence or after trashing the evidence it was said he ran to his uh, girlfriend's house first but the girlfriend wasn't around and then he went to his uncle's house and um, he told his uncle what he had done and the uncle upon hearing what he had done encouraged him to turn himself in and uh, it was said that lawrence switched on his phone and the police also traced it to that location but by the time the police could get there lawrence was already ready to hand himself in because the uncle also had caught police and uh, to tell the police what his um, nephew had done to his family so it was a mix of the police discovering lawrence's location and a mix of lawrence's uncle calling the police too and also at the same time lawrence's willingness to hand himself in since the police had listed him as a suspect so when lawrence was um taken into custody it was said that he denied it at first until they brought his girlfriend as an accomplice because the police also traced that he had gone to that location and um, for him to go to that location immediately after killing his family there's a chance that the girl might know something however lawrence saying that his girlfriend has been listed as an accomplice decided to confess to the crime and admitted that he did it all by himself at the same time the girl also made some confessions that eventually shifted her from being a suspect or an accomplice to a witness now for the girl's part she was the one who bought the knife for lawrence to use to kill his family but according to her lawrence told her to buy the knife and she never knew what lawrence was going to do with it in fact after seeing this incident she started telling the police that she should have known because Lawrence has been giving her signs. Lawrence has been acting weird. There was a time Lawrence asked her to drink a certain substance that was going to make her sleep for long. And now, when Lawrence did, that was on the 2nd of um, January. Lawrence had probably wanted to kill his parents that 2nd of January. And he wanted to use his girlfriend as an alibi, thereby making her sleep for long so he would travel to uh, the family house kill his parents and then go back when the girl wakes up so that the girl can tell the police that no 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 lawrence was with me the whole time but that did not work another thing that the girl also revealed was that lawrence told her that he had found a way that the two of them can be together in peace she did not really understand why he said that but it was 
probably clear that maybe Lawrence's family weren't in support of his relationship with her and maybe that was why Lawrence made that statement to her. Now, is it possible that this boy was killing his family because of the girl? Well, not particularly because when they asked Lawrence why he did it, Lawrence gave um, a, a, a dazzling answer that is still ambiguous up till this point because since the case is still on, I still don't even know the exact reason why Lawrence did it. But Lawrence in his words said that the reason he killed his parents was because the parents were devils, that the parents were killers and that the parents uh, had abandoned him and the, the parents were saying bad things about him and that his family, that is his siblings, were also siding with the parents. And so it was a lot of hatred from Lawrence's end. Lawrence kind of um, insinuated that his parents did not like him and they abandoned him and they weren't treating him well and um, every other member of the family were also in support of what the parents were doing to him. He also felt that the parents were also going to kill him and that was why he did what he did fast enough before they did it to him. So it wasn't still stated where all of this came from but when the police did a few research, they discovered that in the past, Lawrence had had multiple issues with his parents to the point that Lawrence had even reported his parents to the police at a certain time, like the, their family issue in the past had gone to the police station before. So apparently, or I guess that there is a deep rooted family dispute that triggered Lawrence to do what he did. Some sources claim it must have been land ownership but it seems that there could be way more or something deeper that led Lawrence to do this to his family. The police also mentioned that the boy wasn't exactly remorseful throughout the entire case. He wasn't remorseful. He, uh, he cooperated with the police, took them to all the place. He buried the, the, the weapons and the bloody shoes and the, the clothes he wore the day he killed his family. He even took the police back to the house to reenact how he did it and where he did it and what the people what, what his family said to him before he killed them all so basically Lawrence's motive for killing his family is something that is still very questionable up to this point up to this day because it's not there, there isn't a particular cause and i think is most definitely best known to him although some people have criticized him some people think that he is just a psychopath that he is just someone who was hungry for blood and that there was nothing the parents could have done that would have warranted him to want to kill every member of his family. So the case is still ongoing. The last we heard of it, he was to show up in court. The psychiatric initially said that he wasn't mentally stable or mentally fit to stand trials. It was now later confirmed that Lawrence was finally mentally able to stand trial. So we will just see how the trial goes. I most likely would be following this story up and see what his direct motive really was. Personally, I guess there is some deep-rooted family feud that must have led him to do what he did. I would like to hear your thoughts on this story and also don't forget to like this video, subscribe, let me know what country you're watching from and turn on your notification button so whenever there is a new video like this, you will be notified instantly. Thank you for watching.